Hey, what's up guys? It's me, Brandon Johnson from Used Boats TV. I've got a few of these 2016 Hurricane 2486 Bowrider deck boats for sale, so I thought I'd take you out on the water and show you how they work. Let's go. Once again, I'm Brandon and I'm going to take you out on a test drive. So we're going to check out today one of these Hurricane 2486 deck boats. First thing we do before we put the boat in the water though is we put our plug in right here. It goes underneath the out drive. Now the reason that we do this is otherwise the boat will fill with water and possibly sink. It's got a bilge pump but it doesn't always, doesn't always keep up fast. When we're done boating for the day, we go ahead and take that out. That way if it rains in the boat, if you're a trailer boater, if you take it in and out with a trailer, then take it out. That way, uh, the batteries are only going to keep up so long before you actually have an aquarium, an on-land aquarium full of mosquitoes. It's not cool at all. So, let's get started. But first, I'd like to introduce our channel. I've been passionately selling boats for over 19 years. The purpose of this channel is to help you and your family enjoy boats and boating just as much as my family and I enjoy it. So thanks to the help of my staff here at Heartland Marine and my sons, we've been able to successfully upload hundreds of boat reviews, instructional operation, help, and how-to videos. I don't ask for anything in return, except for the opportunity to possibly help you find a boat in your time frame. So to stay up on everything Anybody we upload, click that subscribe button below and stay tuned. Nice. Now, once you have your boat in the water, because it's gotta be in the water to run, come back here underneath the port side aft compartment like so and you have a dual batteries with the dual battery switch we turn that switch to both the alternator and yes mercury Verados do have alternators keep both batteries charged while we're boating and having a good time now if we're going to stop and cove out drop anchor crank up some tunes get underneath the shade top then what we're going to do is switch it to one or two if i didn't already say that when we're done for the day just shut it off but the benefit of isolating a battery when we're coving out is you only have to have one battery to start the boat so it's just a safety system we're going to put it on both and go boating it's on both. All right. From there, just come on up to the helm. So that we don't make this video extremely long, because it's going to be long anyways, because I'm full of hot air on a cold day. Um, I'm going to include some links down in the description below that should help everybody with boats and boating. What to do when your boat won't start. Uh, fixing up your boat. How to tilt, use tilt and trim on your boat. Just little things like that that'll help enhance your boat ownership experience. But on this specific motor, we, first thing we want to do is hit the master power button, which is right here at the helm. And that will actually turn power onto the dash. The motor will still run because it's on the battery switch, but the accessories will not because this is spliced in right there to provide power to the helm. So master power on. This is multi-port injected amazingness, so it's easy to start. It's a neutral, run, kill switch is up. Just go ahead and turn the key. Alarm sounds, that means everybody get out of the way. We're gonna go, fires right up. Now the Mercury Verados are extremely quiet, so you can't hardly hear them run. So what I always recommend doing is just looking over your shoulder and looking for your water stream right there. See that stream of water? And all that's doing is showing you that your motor is properly pumping water that it's using to keep itself cool. So this does have digital throttle and shift. So all we do to shift it is push the button in and it's so freaking smooth. It's right in gear. Neutral's right here. Reverse right there. All gears have a definitive catch and your throttle range is beyond that definitive catch. That makes it extremely easy to maneuver. You only have to push the button going in and out of gear. Now I've had a lot of people that are excited to drive and as they shift into forward though, they put their finger on the trim up button right here and that sends that motor way up in the air, takes it out of the water and then the boat's not going on anywhere but it sure is running hard. Um, one thing I always like to do before I take off, I recommend, go ahead and shut your window right here. You're going to see people going up and down the lake all day, every day, with their windshields open. But what happens is this windshield begins to bow in the shape of the port side glass. So what we're going to do is run through our buttons and switches real quick. And then I'm going to take the camera from Billy and show you how the boat operates. And we'll start from there. So your stereo is right here. Hit the button up. 
and it sounds pretty good. Spirit white. Okay. Water system is winterized, so we'll check that later. Depth finder. There's no external depth finder on this, so that button is a button if you want to add one. Bilge pump, live well. I hear a pump coming on. We'll play with that later. Accessory, God knows. Sometimes at nighttime it turns on a funky light somewhere. Accessory, God knows. Courtesy lights are on the inside if it has them. Oh, right there, LEDs. See that? Okay. Docking lights, that's the headlights up front. It's illegal to drive with those on at nighttime. It's only for docking and safe practice, for safe practice. Navigation light, that's the red and green built in up front and the white light in the back. In the middle's off, all the way down, anchor light stopped at night. These illuminate in blue when they're on, so you know if they're on. Horn, very weak, so we'll look into that. Right here is how you plug your phone into the stereo. You can do a USB or an auxiliary cable, and there's a little phone charger right there. You also have tilt steering, so you can set this wherever you want it. So let's go ahead and look at the gauges. We have our tachometer, or speedometer, sorry. Now when it's cold like this, very rarely will these speedos work because they're water fed and they get clogged. Hopefully this has GPS speedo right here. We're gonna find out. Fuel, tilt and trim. That's sending the motor up and it works, I'll be darned. And sending it down. Now when I accelerate this boat, I'm gonna keep it trimmed all the way down. Why is that important? Big tip when you're test driving boats. When you have your motors trimmed down, you're keeping that nose forced down, right? So you're putting the maximum amount of load on the engine. That's when you're gonna feel if it hit, misses, sputters, pops, or falls on its face. That's why we do that. When we trim it up, that allows the nose to come up, forward momentum lets the whole boat rise. So even though this works, we're gonna learn how to do it by feel. Uh, tachometer, voltage is good. Then we have some digital gauges right here and you can kind of play with this and set it wherever you want it. So for now, I'm gonna go ahead and take the camera from Mr. Bill here and we're gonna go boating. Alrighty then. So once again, we only push the button in to go into gear. How do you like this cool bracelet that my three-year-old gave me? It says God made me special. It's true though. Special like handicapped, but that's just me. Let's go ahead and flip this around so that you can hear me. I forget to do that sometimes. Sorry if that was awkward, guys. Bear with me. So we have a very rough day here at the lake. It's probably going to get beat up, but we'll do the best we can. Let's tighten this back up. Sorry, bear with me. All right, now we're gonna drive it. So this boat's got a lot of punch. Verados have a lot of punch. You got your seatbelt on, Bill? Yep. So, as you can see, it takes off quickly. No GPS speedo right now. Let's go ahead and pull up. Let's get GPS going on my phone here. Let's get that rocking. But the boat picks up, runs extremely well, trimmed down. Look at that rooster tail. So we got 36 miles an hour, trimmed all the way down, and we're doing that. Also, when you hit your trim, that takes over. See the digital, then it'll go back right here. So 36 miles an hour at 5,600 RPM. We also have our tack right there. 37, let's go ahead and trim it on up. Do one, two, one, two. That's letting that drive come up, see right here. 38, 39 miles an hour. Giving it some more, four, five. So there's 40, we're at a four degree trim angle, 41. Running nice and smooth here. The steering is awesome, it's very smooth. 43 miles an hour push it as far as we can go. We're hitting almost 6,000 RPM, which is good, and almost 50%, 50% trim angle. And that's gonna be our top speed right there. Right about in the mid 40s, half trim, 6,000 RPM. Let's come back down. Remember guys, when you go to turn your boat, you wanna trim back down. Because when you bank the boat, when the size of the boat comes out of the water, it'll bring that drive completely out of the water. Let's go ahead and turn it hard. Look at the steering, it's awesome. One finger, super smooth. It's like glass out here, it's awesome. Look at that rooster tail back there. All right, so this boat definitely banks. I was really concerned about that, you know, with an outboard powered deck boat, like what the, 
maneuverability is in terms of down in the turn um, uh, for water sports, throwing a skier off, wearing out your kids and throwing them off. But in reality, the boat turns so smooth the way it's set up, that's not an issue at all. It's extremely impressive, actually. So we know that the top speed's about 45. We know it, let's find a comfortable cruise speed real quick. Um, I'm gonna hand the camera to Billy and we're just gonna take you boating back with us to the boat ramp. We'll try to find a comfortable cruise speed that gives us a decent speed and a decent RPM. Let's go back to the heads up display here. No GPS accuracy. Okay. So it cruises nice at nine miles an hour, but that's not what I want to do. Oh, now we're starting to pick up speed, so it must just be clogged up on our GPS pedometer. Really, even at heart, barely pushing at all, just slow acceleration, it planes nice and smooth. So, I mean, this boat cruises great on plane, about 25 miles an hour, trimmed down. Just give it a couple clicks, see what our RPM does. Actually increases. So this boat rides flat without any tricks. So we'll just leave it there. I mean, 29 miles an hour, trimmed down, is a very comfortable cruise speed at 4,900 RPM. Go throw it back on the trail. out here it's very quiet inside you know there's a lot of boats like this style hull that I drive and it's just so noisy I'm having to scream but you know the water noise and wind noise is one thing but the actual sound of the boat being solid not hearing that water underneath the hull it's very impressive so now we're gonna put it back on the trailer and just a couple quick hints here a lot of people despise doing what we're about to do and the reason for that in my mind after doing it 19 years and seeing thousands of people every weekend do it is to get the trailers too deep in the water. You want about 12 to 24 inches of front bunk, the very bottom closest to the truck out of the water. Now the lake's down right now so we had to get a lot of trailer out of the water to get the boat in. Um, to get the boat in we had to put the boat way in so we're really too far out. I'm stammering but anyhow just remember that when you put it in the water just back it in until you see the ass end float. When it floats you know you're good. All right, guys, now we're going to look at the condition of the exterior and interior. Thanks for watching. We're going to go ahead and look at the condition of this bad gal after I turn this around. All right, now we're going to check out the conditions. So, skag's great, props great, cavitation plate's all there. It's not beat up, broken, or abused. Now, what this bar is here, I didn't really know what these were. <laughs> until a customer told me, it's called a turbo swing. You can go to their website. It's not a protector, it is, I mean, kind of protects it, but you put your toe point here, then you can sling kids and critters all over the place. So you have a nice deep reaching ladder. But what we're looking at is condition as well as we explain, why wow, we explain things. Got a little ding in the rubber rail, some very, very fine stress cracking. Stress cracking is in the fiberglass. The only thing it hurts is your feelings when it looks at it. It's, or it's in the gel coat, not the fiberglass, sorry. Um, it's like an old farmhouse been painted too many times. Gel coat was too thick there. Little bump, puts little web cracks in it, doesn't hurt anything. Right here, rubber rail's a little chewed up, dropping down whole side, starboard side. Everything looks great here. We gave it a full detail and a wax. As you can see, there's nothing to point out. 
strapped down to the hull on this tall trailer you can really see everything extremely well okay keels in great shape lifting strakes so the keel is the bottom of the boat here the very bottom most v lifting strake are the edges then the reverse chine is the outer edge the stem is the front of the boat from the lifting strake to basically the hull shape there okay got another little ding right there whiskey ding a little bump in the rub rail rub rail has seen better days but the gel coat's good we are port side whole side above rub rail now same spot a little stress cracking right here okay below the rub rail port side everything looks beautiful now i don't know if you can tell or not but it is like a very light gray that's why that's very light gray billy in the truck up there he calls it tan i i don't know how in the heck anyone would think that's tan dropping down whole side port side everything looks good there we go now we will jump into the interior all right now we got her back in the nice warm shot gonna check out the condition so some of the c decks gonna need to have some glue back here there's a couple of loose ones Remember, this is the main spot right here okay but looking at the vinyl now there's like a scuff right there this one's good check it out nice and slowly Your rear filler seat is here. This one's here, and it's actually got like this thing that slides up. We got the engine cow off because we're getting ready to scan that motor Monday morning. Cap and seat vinyl. Storage here. I was able to replace this, but the water pump is bad. I took it all apart. Took it all apart to check, see my hands. What you do is you take this up, take these screws out. There's my test light. There's power to the pump, but it doesn't come on. So that tells me that that's bad. And here we got our table, more C deck, little compartment. Alright. Vinyl, vinyl. In the helm, plenty. A little crack right here. That's what happens because those are plastic sealed face gauges, Smartcraft gauges. Not much you can do about it once they're sealed. But replace the whole gauge, you can't just get a face. So, wind block door, storage, snap on covers. I don't remember seeing this. Storage. You can tell that's been knocked off once. Move the hinge. Everything looks great. There is a nick in that chair right there. Could use a vinyl repair or leave it alone if you ever never plan to use it. Everything looks clean. Locker, it's narrow. Bow boarding ladder. There we go. Check our lights, nav, dock light, starboard port, nav. Get that dock light. So oh, there it is. And anchor light. Well, my name is Brandon. Sure, hope you like this boat. We're gonna finish up with some drone footage. Please subscribe if you haven't, and I'll see you on the water.
Bounce, pop it, pop it.